empirically verify whether or not that mutation rate is true. So if all four versions in, Adam has two different copies, I should say, 23 chromosomes for a total of 46, 23, 23, and E for a total of 46. Well, if they then reproduce, the only thing they can pass on is what they already, the same thing they already share. Ah. There's, there's no so new combinations that could arise. It's just the same thing, the same thing, the same, every generation. So it's I give him a hand, but uh, there's nine speakers there. So, yeah. But uh, anyway, I hope it was uh, informational for you. A lot of stuff that was covered there, a lot of science. Um, but it, when it really comes down to it, you know, it's in what's in the DNA, what's in the genome. And uh, these scientists have uh, investigated that and uh, found out that it really does match the Bible. And He's, re he's really right, or the, the speakers are right. When the evolutionists are challenged with these facts, they want to ignore them. They really don't want to face them. And uh, so, um, if there are any questions or comments, we can take a few minutes to do that. Uh, I'm not going to be able to answer all your questions, but uh, I'm not a, a geneticist, but I do have some science background. Um, so I'll be able to, uh, you know, possibly point you to some areas where you can get more information. But that's uh, kind of introduces Robert Carter too. You heard him speak there, and uh, he is a geneticist. He's done a lot of research and writing, and uh, he's going to be here in February, and so he'll be speaking here, and as well as some other churches and up in Mount Vernon, doing a mini conference in the morning, Saturday morning. So, anybody have any comments, questions? You're overwhelmed? Well, I see an awful lot of old people here. I see an awful lot of old people here, and I think the kids are the ones that really need this. I think, um, you know, Ken Ham and uh, Mortensen also pointed out that what we need, you know, we have young people here, thank you for coming. And uh, you need to tell your friends to also come and learn about this and even your parents because the parents need to understand what the issues are as well. And that's, uh, you know, we ourselves who, who know these issues, we need to get, uh, and we are, some of us are involved in, in teaching and spreading the word about this. There is a lot of information available uh, on our website, for example, just to mention a few things, um, there are, uh, I've got a, um, a menu item called resources, and one of those is mobile apps. Young people use their smartphones, and they like to use mobile apps. We have six of them uh, listed on there, and instructions on how to download them uh, that you should avail yourself of. Uh, one of them is, is put out by a company called Genesis Apologetics. They've written a book called uh, Evolution Debunked, and uh, they have all the, the whole book up on the website. And they have the, the top 50 questions that young people ask about evolution and creation, and their answers are on it, within that mobile app as well. So that's just one example. There's probably... Mm, uh, I think about 10 different companies or so that provide, do research in this area and do provide answers. You heard from some of them here, the uh, Institute of Creation Research, uh, 
Croatia Ministries International, which is where Carter and uh, Sarfetti are, uh, and then Answers in Genesis, all three. And there's a few other organizations that are um, local or within Portland that we have access to as well. We've, at this point, we've had, uh, uh, I'm thinking probably close to 30 different speakers that address different aspects of apologetics. And all of these talks, uh, this one is excluded because we can't uh, put that out in public because they, they sell the DVDs. But all of the lectures that we've had here are recorded on our website. So you can just go on there and look at uh, um, apologetics videos and they're all listed there and they recorded. So you can hear Carter, Sarfetti, and other speakers we've had, their lectures. Yeah? Uh, you said that the believing scientists, when they uh, confront the unbelieving ones about the DNA, uh, they just ignore it. Uh, I was wondering, are there any unbelieving scientists that see some worth in the, in the Christian argument? The, the, um, when the creation scientists present, present evidence and they present it to the secular scientist, yeah. well, like uh, Jensen was saying, they largely don't want to address it. They don't want to look at it. Uh, remember the, the example of uh, uh, junk DNA. The secular scientist says this is uh, proof that evolution is true. And now we know that's not true. And that's what we're finding. We're uncovering more and more errors in the theory of evolution. It's, it is not good science. And so they are uh, continuing to unravel the arguments that evolutionists are using. And, uh, but we have to make this information available to others as well. And that's why we have a website which have m much of the evidence for the truth of God's word and uh, creation uh, the doctrine of creation in uh, particular as well. There's a lot of evidence out there. These, uh, <clears throat> for example, CMI, Creation Ministry Incident International, they have about 10,000 different articles which answer specific questions. All you have to do is g either go to their website or you, if you go to our website, uh, I've got a menu item called Find Answers. Go to Find Answers, type in the questions you have, and it'll give the biblical answers to that. So, for example, a, a question that was often asked in the past was, where did Cain get his wife? How do you explain that? Type it in to find answers, and you'll get about 20 articles which describe the, you know, the biblical answer to that. And that's just one example. DNA, there's a lot of answers to that as well. So the, the answers are out there. Um, Many of these creation speakers you see here, almost all of them, almost all of them used to believe in evolution until they were challenged. Say, how do you explain this? Show me the evidence for evolution. And they can't. And in, in, in case of um, uh, John Sanford, for example, he was a professor at Cornell University and he talked evolution for many, many years until he was challenged by a student saying, how do you explain this? And he couldn't, so he investigated. It took him about three years, and now he's one of our you know, best speakers and apologist for the truth of creation, biblical creation. So there are answers out there. People just need to look. So I think we'll bring it to a close here in a minute, unless somebody else has a comment or, uh, yeah. I don't think I'll try to lead it. Um, I think one of the things that I wanted to get your opinion on this because they alluded to it in the video, uh, and, and the coattails of what the young friend of the woman over here said. I, I've engaged many, and the moment that you mentioned Jonathan Safari, Rob Carter, oh, just, they won't even, oh, they're Christian, they're, 
right again. He didn't name Adam and Eve. So they don't, so I, I'd like to get your input on the cowardice aspect and the fear aspect. How much, how real is that? Um, it, it is a real. Uh, in, in fact, uh, one of the speakers we have coming, Jerry Bergman, uh, he has he taught in secular universities and some Christian universities as well, about 30, I think 35 years. And he's the one that I refer to has written numerous books for secular journals, but also for creation journals. And uh, he, he's, uh, I think, in his early 60s at this point. And last year, or, or the year before, he lost his job because the other professors spoke up, say, hey, this guy's a, a, a creationist. We can't have him teaching our children. That, that does happen. And uh, it happens in the area of science, you know, evolution versus creation. Um, you know, some of the, like, Jensen, Jason Lyle, who are creationists, um, in their student days, they would write uh, articles but not use their name because if they did, they, they would be challenged by their professors. So it is real. Uh, people have lost their jobs you know, in the secular world because they are, are creationists. Um, another example is in, in uh, UCLA, or sorry, University of uh, um, California in Northridge. There is a scientist, creationist, he found blood cells in dinosaur bones. How can that be? If dinosaurs died off 65 million years ago, how do you explain that? So he, he wrote about that, and uh, he, he lost his job after a year or so. So it does happen. Um, uh, sorry? No, this was a Mark, or Armitage was the scientist there, yeah. Uh, but I, I have seen that too, because I, I have uh, uh, one of my hot, well, I have two hot buttons. One is evolution, because it's not good science. Um, and the other is global warming, because there is no good science behind it. And you'll find that people that uh, write against global warming, you know, they lose their jobs. You know, they don't get government grants anymore if they do that. Um, I'm retired, so I can say anything I want. And so I've written extensively on global warming, refuting that. It's just, it is not real. And uh, evolution, same thing. There's no science behind it. So, uh, you know, that's why we, we, we do this, apologetics. People have to know, you know, what is real science and what is uh, a hoax. Okay, so if there's no other questions or comments, let me uh, wrap up then. So you'll see in the, uh, the back tables there, we have a lot of resources that we make available uh, during these and after these meetings. And uh, one of the ways we, well, there's two ways we support the ministry. One is we take free will offerings, which we do after each meetings. Uh, this meeting, we, we didn't have a speaker that we have to pay an honorarium to, but we do have DVDs, and uh, we're going to make the DVDs available to you at a reduced price. These are the, uh, the DNA battles, and also this um, Evidence Press has put out four other DVDs that are available back there. Universe Battles is one of them. You can see them listed on there, testing evolution, uh, echoes of the uh, Jurassic and starlight and time. These are also um, DVDs like you've seen here, but on related topics. So we're making them available for $12 each, and we're encouraging you to buy those and share them, perhaps you, you know, Christmas gift or something, uh, you know, buy a few of those and give them out. Watch them first and then give them out to 
whatever you like to do. The other thing that I want to make you aware of, we have uh, uh, ministry DVDs out there. These are little thin uh, DVDs that we have on the table there. These are called ministry DVDs. We buy them in volume we, and uh, we sell them for $2 each. We buy them for $2 each because we buy them in volume and we're selling them at $2 each. But if you buy one of them or more, you have to promise to watch it and then pass it around to somebody else. And then there's a whole bunch of pamphlets out there as well from uh, CMI, AIG, and others which answer specific questions that people may have. Take a look at those and see if they might be um, of interest to you or you can use them as stocking stuffers to share with your family and friends. So, uh, so t take a look at that. And um, yeah, okay, the, the next slide then is uh, just reminding that uh, next year, you know, the meeting is until the end of January now, January the 20, 24th, and that's where we're gonna have uh, a Patrick Nury, who has been here before. Uh, he's gonna speak about uh, Genesis and the Ice Age. Many people, if you read the secular literature, they'll think there's been a whole bunch of ice ages in the past, but he will show why we believe that there's one ice age which happened after the flood. And he's a geologist, he's studied this many years, and uh, he does tours of the uh, geological uh, formations around here, and uh, he teaches geology to um, homeschoolers, and uh, so he's, he's really gifted in this area. So that's next year. So again, there is more information. Um, take a look at the resource table, see what's available. But all this information is on our website as well, upcoming meetings and resources available. So let me um, close in a word of prayer and wish you each of a, a good Christmas. We can still call it Christmas rather than a holiday and uh, a happy new year as well. May God bless you in the new year. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the, um, the, the um, witness of these seven different scientists who understand DNA, who, who understand uh, how to interpret that, and for the two theologians who back that up and show that the evidence that we have that you have left for us uh, supports and confirms the truth of your word. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.